On August 27th last year, young Harry Dunn, who would have been 20 years old this week, imagine how his mother on Mother's Day feels, will feel about the loss of a young man who was still a teenager uh, when a woman driver, an American woman driver, driving on the wrong side of the road, struck him on his motorcycle and killed him and then fled the country. It was said erroneously in my view that she was able to flee the country because she was an American diplomat's wife. As a matter of fact, she was not the wife of an American diplomat and even if she had been the Diplomatic immunity rules are not for the avoidance of facing the music of such a banal but brutal and deadly and fatal crime as killing someone through careless driving. That's not what the protocols are for. Uh, but in any case, her husband was not a diplomat. Her husband was an intelligence officer. And we now know that not only was her husband an intelligence officer, but so was she, Anne Sokoulis, for it is she. As a matter of fact, she was an intelligence officer superior to her husband. So she was not here as the wife of a diplomat. She was here as a senior intelligence officer. And that's why, in my view, she was allowed to flee the country. And she is now prospering in Langley, Virginia, at the head of 100 people in her own section. Something to do with Russia. She's a, she's a Russia speaker. She's a Russia specialist. I have no idea what she was doing in Britain. She was just here as the wife of a diplomat. And if you believe that, I've got a bridge here in London that I could sell you. Anyway, to make matters worse, the British government pretended to be outraged that this woman had fled the country when the truth was not just rather different but was diametrically opposite. Now, Rad Seiger is a lawyer and he's the spokesman for Harry Dunn's family. And I must say, Rad, you've done a fantastic job. If I'm ever in trouble, I want you as my family spokesman. Thank you. So leave your business card. I want to start with what's in the mail on Sunday today, which is proof positive that the government were lying when they said that they tried to stop Anne Sekoulis from escaping justice. Am I right? Is that your reading of that? That's 100% accurate, that story, George. And, you know, thank you for that. You've just encapsulated everything, um, our whole case in those few minutes. And, you know, it's, it's as you said, it's, it's, it would have been Harry's 20th birthday next week, mothering Sunday next week. And his mother and parents are, are sat at home this evening, utterly devastated, not only with the loss of their son, but everything that they have been put through. So as we enter this conversation, I would just ask everybody to bear in mind that there are human beings suffering at home tonight. Yes, and to lose your teenage son, I have one myself, is unimaginably devastating. But you can't even get the closure of knowing what really happened. And if someone's recklessness, criminal negligence, dangerous driving, dangerous driving was to blame, that, that they're punished for that. However lightly, they're found guilty. Never mind the punishment. They're found guilty. There's a sense of closure. Harry's mother and father are, are not getting that because of this evasion. Let's not forget who the real culprits are here. Trump and his administration in recalling her in the first place. And as you'll know better than me, that's a, a, you know, an incredible violation, as you say, of international law and the Vienna Convention. But, you know, in your deepest, darkest hour, George, you would have thought that you, you could expect your government to come along 
and scoop you up and look after you and help you achieve the justice that you so deserve. And you might remember back um, in September and October, this family retreated like lepers. If it wasn't for me, for the neighbors, for their friends who, you know, you know, rallied around and helped them, you would never have heard of us. This would have all been swept under the carpet. And that is the most galling thing about this is, you know, where is this government? It's their duty, George. As you know, you used to be, you know, in power. It's the first duty of a government to safeguard and protect the lives of, of its citizens. And it just hasn't happened here. And I am more angry tonight um, than I have been. You can, see, you can see why now. What were they doing? They effectively waved her off at the airport. Yes, exactly. Outrageous. A smoking gun text message shows a foreign office official acquiesced to American spy Anne Sokolas, leaving Britain on the next flight out following the death of teenage motorcyclist Harry Dunn. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab told the Commons that his department had objected in clear and strong terms to former CIA agent Anne Sokolas, not former of course at all, fleeing to America after the fatal crash outside RAF Crowton last August. But he's now been forced to disclose private communications between British and US officials in the days before Sekulis left after Harry's family took legal action against the Foreign Office. An incendiary text message exchange between a senior Foreign Office official and his US counterpart suggested that Ms. Sekulis was free to leave on the next commercial flight. They're bound to rights. Thanks to your efforts, Thank you. freedom of information, they're banged to right as liars. Liars to Harry's mother, liars to the parliament, liars to the British people. Now, you know, what are the consequences if, if, if you mislead parliament, George? And that's what happened that day. I, you know, to, to us, it's a very serious matter. And, uh, you know... But we, once upon a time, it would have meant, in the time of profumo, uh, absolute political banishment. Uh, to the equivalent of a power station in Orlando. Well, it's, it's got to be again. This is this is the mother. Your show is the mother of all talk shows. This is the mother of all scandals, George. And we are going to expose it and make sure that those responsible are held to account. It, the parents are heroes. They've not brought this, these judicial review proceedings for their own benefit. They've lost their son. They're doing it for you and me. They're doing it to make sure that this government is held to account. Because what happened to this family? after they lost their son, should never happen again. And you might call me naive, you might say, Rad, forget it, you're up against the establishment and you'll never get anywhere. Absolutely not. We've moved a mountain and we will continue to shift them until you and I can, and can walk out into the street and know that we're going to be safe and that if the worst happens, we are looked after. That we'll, that, that we'll get justice. Absolutely. It, it, it's, it's quite a contrast to the US demand for the extradition of Julian Assange. <laughs> I merely mention in passing. So you know, this is a US government official who killed Harry through reckless, dangerous driving and who escaped justice. Julian Assange is being held in Belmarsh prison whilst Sokolas is now in charge of 100 officers at the CIA in Langley, Virginia. Look, I don't know anything about the Julian Assange matter. That's not my interest here. My interest here is representing the parents of Harry Dunn. But what business do the Americans have calling for Julian Assange's extradition when they're refusing to send Anne Sukulis back? And George, you'll know, reciprocity is the governing principle behind extradition. You send me your people, I'll send you my people. And that's how it's worked for centuries. If one side is just going to rip up that treaty and say, well, we're going to ignore it. I, nobody here in London is to go to the United States until Anne Sekoulis is back, under no circumstances. And I've made that clear to the, to the, to the British authorities. You, you just can't have it. The big concern is that this relationship is totally One's imbalanced. Up. Yeah. It needs to be reset. It's because, well, let's, let's make sure that, isn't, that, that, that doesn't carry on, George. Yes, uh, although we entered an, into a solomon Bidening treaty, uh, which was a national humiliation. Uh, embarrassing. Embarrassing. I mean, you know, the drafters of, of, of that agreement should hang their heads. Tony Blair's government. 
Quite, so, quite. And, you know, were they spinning too many plates? Was it done in a rush? Or were the Americans taking advantage of them? Of them? We just don't know. But this all has to come out. We will get full disclosure about how we find ourselves in this position where the Americans can um, do what they like and, and um, decide whether, they not, they, whether or not they want to send people over. And yet we are bound, bound to send people over. Mm. The whole thing. So what happens uh, next? Uh, it's now... Uh, in the High Court, when's the next hearing? What will that be adjudicating? The next hearing is on the 2nd of April in the High Court in London, where the court will first of all decide whether these parents have permission to bring the judicial review. That's the first step. That will undoubtedly be granted. The second thing is we're having a bit of a scrap about which documents the governments have to disclose. They've, 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 they've had a half-hearted attempt at disclosing some documents, and you've seen, you've seen what's come out of that, but there's a whole raft of documentation that we haven't seen that they're clearly trying to um, conceal from us, and we won't let it happen. This all has to come out. What are you fighting for? What are your demands? The, the demands are very simple. One, Anne Sekoulis is coming back. There is no other way. That has to happen. The second thing is this must never happen again. And the only way we're going to ensure that happens, George, is to clarify what's, what's, what goes on at Crowton. What do they do there? You know, we all, we, all, we all believe in diplomatic immunity for the right people. If you're, if you're posted to a hotspot country, you need the protection. You, you don't need it here in London or in South Northamptonshire where we live. You're not going to be in danger there. And as you said, if, if, you know, if a crime is committed, you know, Vienna says that you must respect and abide by the laws of your host country. Stay and deal with it. If you had knocked somebody over that, that day or I had done, we would have, you know, gone through the process. It's well, we have. I mean, British diplomats have in, uh, in uh, cases that had nothing to do with diplomacy, more simple criminal cases, Quite. have faced the music in the United States. Quite. And the, actually, the, here's something that the British authorities do do well. They believe in Vienna, and they will not do what the Americans did with Anne Sekoulis, is just whip them out of the country. I've spoken to many diplomats abroad who have committed crimes, parking fines, or more serious matters, and they've just been left to face the consequences. So let's give the, the, you know, the, the British authorities their, their, you know, their due there. They do believe in Vienna, and they, and they follow the rules. America, America is not doing that. And as you say, the unkindest cut of all, that... British citizens have got a right to expect that the British government will have their back. Uh, will it's their be, duty. Will be, for yeah, the first duty. Their first duty. We'll be, we'll be fighting for them, but it, if I'm any judge, they're probably, behind closed doors, fighting against your uh, clients. You, fighting against Harris Byrne. Listen, you, with your background, you may have more insight into that than, than, than we do. I, you know, I still believe in, uh, in, th in this government and the democracy that we live in, but every day I open up a, a newspaper and I see something that cause, ca causes me to disbelieve that. I'd still like to believe, George, that people there in Whitehall are looking after us. But in, with, in, the, in the case of Harry Dunn, I've seen the complete opposite. And that's my sole job here. I'm going to, you know, reverse all this. Ansakoulis is coming back, and this family will get the closure that you've just mentioned, and we will make sure that this never happens again to another human being ever. Dominic Rabb uh, has not covered himself in glory. Uh, I remember, I can't remember when it was, it might have been during the election, uh, he was basically turning his back uh, on, on the parents. Treating them like lepers. And, you know, these are the nicest people, George, you would ever want to meet. Dad's a maintenance man and mum works in a GP surgery. The nicest people you'd ever want to meet didn't deserve any of this. I think Dominic Robb has, you know, badly let himself down in his handling of it. He's acknowledged that to us, that he, that he you know, he didn't handle it as well as he could. But, but, but why mislead people? Why lie? He's got a duty of candor, George. If the parents ask him a straight question, who is she? What does she do? What have you done to get us justice? He's... He's required to answer them candidly, and he has failed in that duty of candor. Well, I can only infer, you mentioned more than once my, my background. Here's, here's the inference that flows from my nearly 30 years mm. in Parliament, uh, that the British government and Dominic Rabb knew that she was a very much more important asset of the United States intelligence community uh, than they were ready to divulge. Thus, they, the, I was going to call it uh, 
uh, the mischief, but in fact it was a straight falsehood. The falsehood that she was here as the wife of a diplomat, uh, who, a diplomat at uh, RAF, where is it? Crowton. Crowton. It's, it's well known for what? Diplo it's, it's really Are there embassies the, there? It's the hub of the <laughs> diplomatic uh, community. In fact, they're never done doing diplomacy at uh, RAF Crowton. <laughs> RAF <laughs> Crowton. Uh, it must be that she had a much more important role here, that they were prepared to not only let her go, but lie about it for 10 whole days uh, before you discovered even a small part of the uh, truth. It's not your job, because you've got more than enough on your plate, but it's somebody's job to inquire into what, what exactly this woman, Anne Coolis, was doing here in Britain that was so important. I think the Foreign Affairs Committee, are, which is being constituted at the moment, I've, I've had an indication that they're going to have a very close look at that. Um, and it, it, you're, you're absolutely right. It, you know, it needs to be looked at. But George, I, you know, I, I don't believe this stopped at the door of the, the Foreign Office. I believe this is in number 10. And I want to know what edicts, what orders came from number 10 to the Foreign Office. Because we know the relationship that exists between Mr. Johnson and Mr. Trump. And I, I have a very real concern that, that the Trump administration is, has sort of exercised its power, leaned heavily on, on the British authorities, and we then end up where, where we end up, which is that, you know, the authorities were trying to kick this family into the long grass, sweep it under the carpet. They met Donald Trump, didn't they? We all met Donald Trump. Did, and were you was, there? I was there. And Tell us how that went. Well... I mean, it was just a bizarre experience, you know, because we were, we, we were in New York, we just landed, this is six weeks after the family had lost Harry, and um, we were trying to raise the public profile in New York, in New York excuse me, with some, some media work, and my phone went off, and it was the foreign office here in London um, who were explaining to me that the White House wanted to talk to me, and would they, would I mind if they passed my number on? So, I don't know about you, I don't get phone calls from the White House very often. Um, so I said, sure, in 10 minutes. I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> 10 minutes later, my phone rang, and it was an, an invitation to go down. George, that should have been the proudest day of my life as an American, to go to the White House, to the Oval Office, and meet the president. And as, as you will all have seen, we were ambushed. What the hell were they doing? The woman was in the Oval Office at the time, being fated for the intelligence work that you were just talking about. She was, she'd just been promoted, and she was there for a ceremony. And, you know, it was an opportunistic attempt um, to, to get, to get he the... He bounced you. He said, yeah. did you want to meet her? Well, if you'd given me some notice, if you'd said, I've got Anne Coolis, do you want to come down and see her? I might have considered it. Probably rejected it. But we had no idea why, why, been, why we had been invited down. And you can imagine these four parents, you know, rabbits in the headlight. It's a very intimidating place. Some very large... Secret Service type of people who look like they could kill you with the flick of a finger, and this very large, orange-looking man, physically very imposing, saying, I've got her in the next room. She wants to meet you. Four times he said, I really want you to meet her. I think this will be a good thing. And somehow, I, I managed to find the courage to go, that's not what we're here for. That's not what we're doing. And then Charlotte, who's very diminutive, but brilliant, very articulate, just stood up to him as well. And... Um, you know, uh, you know, how disgusting and disgraceful. These, these Are they offering parents, anything? Are they offering any way out of this? They won't talk to us, George, and that's the most disappointing thing. Despite what you might hear publicly, I do have good dialogue with the, with, you know, with the British government, and there's lots of back-channel stuff going on, and I think that's important. The Americans won't talk to us. They don't have the courage to face these parents and to admit that they've done wrong. It's a gargantuan mistake that, that Donald Trump made, and... There, there, is, there is no movement there. So I try weekly to engage with the White House and the State Department. They've refused. They continue to refuse. So, look, ultimately, I, you know. If he was watching now, what would you say to him? I'd say, like, come on. You know, this is the greatest alliance in the world, supposedly. Prove it. Here's your chance to prove to these parents that you, you, know, you mean what you say, that you care about them, you care about their feelings, that, that we believe in a rules-based system, upholding the rule of law. And it's never going to be tolerated, George. There are millions of people in this country who, like you, think this is an outrage. And ultimately, you know, we, 
we will have to shut the bases down. I won't let my children drive outside the, that, that, you know, RAF Crowton anymore. It's like the wacky races. They, they, you know, many of them don't appear to be able to stay on the side of the road that you and I drive on. This has to change. Uh, uh, listen, I've, 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 I've done begging and pleading with him. He, you know, he's just not interested in anything other than what, what's in his interest. I don't believe he cares about these parents. So, you know, but the, the, the door is always open. If he wants to talk to me, I'm here. President Trump, do the right thing. It would become you. Rod Sager, thanks for joining us on the mother of all talk shows. Thank you.